There's only one really good thing about the law of war, in my opinion, and that is something that uh, doesn't appeal to all people, but it's the distinction between a use ad bello and use in bello. Uh, the distinction between the law of going to war and the law that prevails upon the troops once they are engaged in warfare. This is a very important distinction, because what it means is that one, co one side can unjustly attack another side, and then after a few skirmishes and after an exchange of uh, a few rounds of ammunition, the situation is converted from an unjust aggressor attacking a defenseless people into one of equality. All of a sudden, these people who were at the beginning of the war were aggressor and victim, now become two partners in a struggle to stay alive. And in that struggle to stay alive, they have to adopt a common set of rules called how to fight the war justly and fairly. And at that stage of the game, it doesn't matter who started the war, who's just and who's unjust. One of the most important qualifications for a law of war is the recognition that the enemy is your brother. And since in all modern warfare, the entire nation is mobilized to fight other nations. And they are mobilized to, care, to bear arms. They're mobilized to provide the civilian support. They're mobilized to uh, generate the factories that will produce the armaments. They're mobilized to provide the nursing staff. They're mobilized to supply the troops, to provide the bread lines, the uniforms, the medicine, all the things that are necessary to win the war. Therefore, there is a very basic principle of distinction. The principle that you are allowed to injure intentionally the other army, but you're not allowed intentionally to injure the civilians in which this assumption is approached under the Rome Stat Geneva Conventions and the Rome Statutes is to apply a principle of proportionality or clearly excessive harm uh, to the collateral costs that affect civilians. So the principle is that if you attack a military target, you can inflict harm on the civilian population, provided that it is not clearly excessive relative to the military goal. Now, this is a, a truly disastrous legal situation. The other big problem that causes tremendous controversy, even though it's not noticed, is the concept of intention, intentionally inflicting harm on civilians. I think there's been uh, more ink spilled on this aspect of the Goldstone Report than any other question. What does it mean intentionally to inflict harm on civilians? Whatever intention means in the law of war, it's not the same thing that it means in the English language or in any other language. That is part of Article 30 of the Rome Statute, which includes any harm that might occur in the ordinary course of events. Now, just think about it for a minute. This is totally absurd. Because in the ordinary course of events, there are lots of people who are going to get hurt in a military conflict. It does not follow that they are being hurt intentionally. And yet, if you read the language of the Rome Statute, that's exactly what it says. You're mistaken about this critical fact. How does this bear upon your intention? There is no answer to this question under the law of war.